Hey, how you doing? I'm back at Marlin Martial Arts Centre and we're going to look at something a little bit more practical, which, well let's be honest, it's a first for some time. So in this one, we're going to look at the left lead. The jab, the lead jolt, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to look at four examples of that punch throughout history. And we're going to look at the theoretical underpinnings that draw it all together. And I think that you'll probably see, I hope that you'll probably see, that there are some consistent points. So that when we talk about Dempsey's power generation, what he actually was talking about was a fairly old system that had been in play for quite a long time. He just articulated it in a way that was accessible. And because of his fame and his un undeniable striking ability, um, was given some credence. Much of the, the modern systems of striking in boxing tend to use a very different thing. They tend to use the jab for a very different purpose than as a knockout blow, the way Dempsey used it. Um, and I think that's a shame. But anyway, this isn't about me and what I think. This is about what some of these old timers think. So we'll get on with it. Firstly, I've got two apologies to make before I get on and demonstrate them. The first is that it's really cold in here. Really cold. It's starting to warm up a bit, but because I'm coming down when there's nothing else going on, none of the heating's on, uh, so apologies if I'm shivering a little bit. The other thing I have to say is that I'm really struggling to make a fist at the moment. Um, and so don't, don't slight me too much for my terrible, terrible hand position and fist formation when I'm demonstrating these. I've been doing way too much um, gi jiu-jitsu and my fingers are just mashed at the moment. Um, yeah, what I probably should have done is dosed myself up on painkillers before I came out to film this, but I didn't. So let's get straight on with it. The first one that we're going to look at is Donald Walker's defensive exercises from 1840. So this is the oldest boxing system that I have an original of in, in, my, in my personal collection. I've got some other bits and pieces that are a bit older. Um, including Parkins, obviously, but Parkins doesn't really tell us anything about the technique of boxing. He just mentions it in passing, almost. So we'll look at Donald Walker and we'll see what he has to say. First, I'll read it to you, and then we'll, we'll see what that looks like on a bag. So, here we go. This is what um, Donald Walker says. <sighs> to get a blow in, make a step forward with the left foot and throw the weight on it. At the same time, propping the body up from behind by means of the right toe. Now the interesting thing about Walker's stance is that while someone like Mendoza, even earlier, we see him with both of his feet facing pretty much forward. The right ones may be a little out compared with the left. Walker's is almost 90 degrees, not quite. He goes to great pains to say it's not quite a right angle, but it's pretty close. So as that weight is thrown forwards, He's coming up onto his toes, and he says very clearly here that the instep of the right foot is bent up at every blow, though more for the right hand blow than the left, which, which makes sense. When we're throwing this blow, we're coming up on here, but obviously when we want to throw a right, we've got to get some rotation in, so this is going to come up even more. And you can see straight away, if you're familiar with Dempsey's work, that you can see that this, this is very similar to the way that Dempsey describes the drop step. But we're going to come on to that in a minute. So, so this is Donald Walker. It's really simple from his, his kind of, it's almost a transitional stance. It's very fencing orientated, isn't it? That, that early boxing stance that came in after Broughton, Jackson, Mendoza, Cribb, that sort of period. And you've got this almost 90 degrees and this, this lead off. And it gives you this nice long stance. What he talks about is trying to create a, a, a straight line. When we look at Alanson Wynn, he actually pictures that in a fairly extreme way. So let's grab the next book and have a look at what they say. Let's 
just get the glasses as well. You'll know that if you've been following me for a long time, I didn't used to need glasses to do this, but I literally cannot read normal sized text now without glasses. Don't ever get old. It sucks. So, here we go. Straight hitting. Allenson Wim has a lot to say on straight hitting. I probably should have said this is RG Allenson Wim's All England book on boxing. This one, I think, is 1899. Um, originally published. This is a slightly later version. This one's about 1910, I think, this particular edition. But I've got an earlier one as well in the collection. They are essentially the same book. <coughs> so, here we go. We're not going to go into why straight hits are best. I'm sure you all agree with me that they are. Um, in the forward lunge, the weight of the body should be thrown into the hit with a spring off the right foot, which, however, should not leave the ground. And remember that I, though I use the word simultaneously, the hit should have reached its destination a fractional part of a second before the left foot touches the ground. Now, if before making the lead off you're standing rigidly like a fellow exhibiting his muscles at a panic show, it will take a slight but appreciable space of time to unbend those muscles and tendons before the hit can be made. If, on the other hand, all the joints and muscles are pliant and loose, you can instantly direct their action and no time is lost. Besides which, there is so much more kick in a hit of this kind. Speed is everything. Okay, so it's really pretty simple. And again, there are pictures of this. And his stance is pretty similar to Walker's. A little bit, this is slightly off. It's 90 degrees again. The left lead is up, the elbows are tucked in. The hands are both up about chin height. But what he's saying is a definite spring forward. Walker describes pushing off that foot. Allenson Wynn maybe calls it a spring. And he comes around up onto the balls of the toes. And he does that slightly more than Walker seems to imply. And you can see, there's a lovely picture here, hold on. I'll edit that in, because... But yeah, there's a couple of lovely pictures here. And uh, there's some examples of doing it wrong. There's an example of doing it right. But interestingly, in the photograph of doing it right, as opposed to the picture of doing it right, that rear foot is pretty much flat on the floor. Anyway, this is your stance. Here you go, we're going to throw forwards and we're going to bring this to here. And it really is as simple as that. You'll notice I'm not hitting the bag. I thought I was going to, but I've washed out. So, um, sorry. So that's two. And you'll see that they're actually pretty similar. But Allenson Wynn is very clear in his book that he's not talking about a new system. This isn't a thing of his creation. He's talking about a system that's been in use for years before him. So it's not really a surprise then that what he talks about is actually very similar to something from 50 years before that. But let's have a look at Donnelly, because Donnelly's is a little bit different and it's worth a look. Excuse me. The lead-off should be made when the hand is in the position shown in plate one. Yeah. In all other blows, the hand is more or less drawn back before delivery. In this case, however, it should come straight out, as it were, spontaneously and without the slightest hesitation. Beginners are almost always inclined to hit downwards or chop and bear heavily upon their opponent's guard. This should be avoided. In stepping in, push yourself off the ball of the right foot and spring in about 18 inches, which is about 45 centimetres. The action of the foot and arm should be simultaneous. Do not step in and then deliver the blow. The lead off at the head with the left hand is the only blow that is delivered while the right foot is raised from the ground. As you step in, the right foot should follow and at the moment of striking, hang over the spot formerly occupied by the left. Full advantage is thus taken of height and reach. Be careful when you step in to place the left foot upon the ground heel first. If the toe touches the ground first and your, your adversary by chance gets back instead of guarding or receiving your blow, you do not meet with the expected resistance and consequently are apt to overbalance. In which case, until you can recover yourself, you're at his mercy. So you can, you can see straight away, even without the, the demonstration, but that's a little bit different. He's got a very linear stance. If anything, it's kind of over linear, so it's gone past 90 degrees, and your feet are very much on this line. 
And what he does from his boxing position is he th comes in and this literally is in the air as this lands and he lands it with an upright palm up fist, which is very different in a lot of ways. But the basic principle of this is very, very similar. It feels, if you try this, and I would encourage you to give it a go, Walker's feels all right. Allenson wins, feels all right. Donnelly's feels weird. It feels like it isn't particularly powerful. It feels like your arm's in a very strange position. And that you're even trying to land on this heel first, with this arm thrown out and this one in the air, you do feel very off balance. However, Donnelly had a lot of success. And Donnelly's students had a lot of success. So I wouldn't write it off just because it's a bit weird and different. Now, some time ago, I went through Donnelly's book and I kind of, I spent some time learning his system and I created some videos of it for a Peterson dog. I'm going to see if I can find them. I don't think I can. So we might have to do them again. But what I found, the more time I spent looking at Donnelly's techniques, the more it all started to gel together. And it actually started to work. And when you take one of them and look at it in isolation, you just go, this is crap. I don't like this, it feels wrong, I can't use this, this is crazy, this guy didn't know what he was talking about. But in actual fact, I think he probably did. Anyway, enough of Donnelly. Let's have a quick look at Dempsey. Now, Dempsey talks a lot about power generation. In fact, Championship Fighting by Jack Dempsey is an amazing book. And it's full of some incredibly effective and simple things that you can do to generate massive amounts of knockout power. Um, I've put a course, Hit Like a Freight Train, uh, on YouTube for people who are members of the channel, people who are officially paid members of my fight team. Woo! Yeah. Sorry. Uh, got a bit carried away there. Not very English. Um, <laughs> so if you're interested, you know, just hit the join button. There should be a join button underneath this video. There should be one somewhere on the channel page. I don't know. Um, what I should probably do is get a screen capture and stick an arrow on it to show you where the button is. Um, whether I can be bothered when I edit this or not, who knows? I guess you know because you'll have seen it, but I don't know because that's future us. So we'll make it his decision. Um, so that course covers a lot of his power generation. So we're not going to go into too much detail with that. But effectively what Dempsey likes to do, firstly, he's starting from a much more typical boxing position. So it's kind of, it's not square on like the early pugilists, neither is it completely linear like the kind of transitional period. It's kind of somewhere between the two, much more reminiscent of modern boxing. And what he tends to do is he tends to literally just pull this foot off the floor, which allows your weight to fall. He's not diving forwards into it. He's not springing up onto his foot the way Donnelly does. He's literally just letting his weight fall. And the beauty of, of Dempsey's system is that it can be a tiny movement in order to get that. So instead of having to go like you would in Donnelly or in Allenson, Wynn or Walker with, with uh, Dempsey, you can literally just, just drop. And because it's such a small movement, it makes it an incredibly fast movement. And that's one of the reasons that he was so successful with it. So what he tends to do is he does the little drop step and he throws this out, aiming to contact with the bottom three. Now, if you, like me, have been using your fists for some time, uh, you'll note that those bottom three don't actually form a straight line. So contacting with all three at the same time isn't possible unless something moves. And I'd much rather that my knuckles didn't move anymore. So in that case, aim to contact with the middle two. So as you throw that out, it really is just as simple as that. And what he says is that this step comes in and your fist tends to land simultaneously with your foot. He describes a vertical fist 
landing with this. It's really simple. And you'll see straight away that if you look at these different examples, if you look at walking, look at Alan and Wynn, even to a, a de degree, look at Donnelly, you can see that what Dempsey's talking about is actually an old-fashioned punch. It's old-fashioned power generation, just described in a more efficient and accessible way. I hope this has been of some interest to you. I'm a little nervous for putting this video out because it's been such a long time. But, you know, let's stick it out there. Let's see what people think. So please put something in the comments. Let me know what you think. And for those of you who are still here at the end of the video, fight team.